All right. So last week uh, I gave you a couple of uh, homework assignments. Uh, so what are the three P's? So the three P's are people, places, and play things that are holding you back. Um, you know, I told you that if you're weighing yourself every week, go ahead and put your scale in the closet. You don't have to literally throw it away, but at least put it aside during the this uh, four-week spread. And then, you know, we talked about the one degree difference you can make right now. If you didn't get a chance to watch the video on YouTube, just type in uh, uh, 212 degrees and it'll pull up several videos. Uh, it's probably going to be the latest one that's been uploaded. And it's, I, I would assume it's probably about eight or nine months old. Um, but, you know, what's the one thing you can do tonight that'll make a difference tomorrow? And, you know, for example, on uh, the the one thing that I typically do in the evening that really helps me prepare for my day um, tomorrow is I make sure that I have all of my meals planned out, um, you know, at least my, my go-to snacks. And I always bring my cooler. I have those meals set aside. You know, there are days where I forget to put, um, you know, I, I forget to uh, set those items aside. Uh, and then when I do that, I don't eat as well as I, as I should. Um, but the, you know, the evenings where I do that consistently, you know, I'm, I'm able to stay focused. I'm able to make sure I'm eating in threes and, you know, eating every three to four hours. So who, uh, who was able to finish their, their homework last week? Or how about we, how about we do this? Can anybody tell me what the three P's might be that are holding, holding them back? You know, the people, the places, or the playthings? Anyone? A restaurant, definitely. Like going out to eat, is that what you're talking about? Is that sure. Yeah, so that can be a, that can be a place, for, definitely. And what restaurants in particular? Well, my personal favorite, the Mexican food. Okay. So, and what Mexican restaurant in particular? Which which one? Uh, which one seems to sabotage your results or to, or set set you back? Well, I, I can do good, but I mean, we go to Gringos most often. But I, you could do pretty decent there whenever you try. I'm I'm pretty good about that there. Okay. Well, I know for me uh, in particular, I I typically don't eat Mexican food anymore, and I I love eating Mexican food. But uh, if I go out to eat, now you know I usually get the chicken fajitas, and sometimes I'll get the corn tortillas, or I won't have the uh, the tortillas. But uh, I'll tell you, it's the it's the chips and the salsa that really kind of set me back. So you know, one of the things that I'll do is I'll just tell them not to bring it out. Uh, you know, that's something really insignificant but you know that can help you because otherwise you could have you know five to six hundred calories in chips and salsa before the meal even gets out who else what are some of the the people places and play things that are holding you back you know it could be family members you know it could be places like restaurants um, you know, I talked about last week how, you know, anytime I go out to my parents, uh, for some reason, you know, I'll revert back to some old habits. It doesn't happen all the time, um, but especially if my mom makes a really good home-cooked meal, you know, I have a hard time. So I used to drink lots of water. Sometimes I'd have a protein shake before I go. I would go out there, so, you know, that way I wouldn't uh, be tempted to eat or overeat. Anyone, what are the people, places, or playthings that might be holding you back? Michael, one of ours is when we go camping, we're not consistent with eating every three hours like we are at home. Okay, and why is that? Busy. <laughs> Just doing stuff outside and not taking the time to do it. Okay, so you, you, do you think it really comes down to just not taking the time to do it or planning yes. and preparing those meals out? Yes. Okay. So what's the one thing you could do to, to help overcome that? Plan out all my meals before I leave. <laughs> okay. Or log my food every day that I'm out there. Are you going to do that when you're camping? 
sometimes I don't have reception to do that, so I'd have to do it by hand. Mm -hmm. So probably not. <laughs> and I probably wouldn't. I mean, you're on vacation, right? So you right. can kind of you can use your hand as a guide, um, but you know, like, like I was saying, just by planning and preparing your meals, you know, and maybe you just do that with your snacks. You know, typically I always know what I'm having for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's just those snacks, and I think that's where most people get into trouble. But if you have those quick uh, and convenient or those go-to meals, you know, that can make a big difference, especially when you're camping. Right. Right. All right. So let's uh, let's move on. So, uh, you know, I don't know if uh, I had an opportunity at the beginning of this year. I guess it was back in uh, back in the spring to attend uh, Financial Peace University with Dave Ramsey. And whether or not you agree with his philosophy, he said something that was really interesting. He said that money is amoral. You know, it doesn't have, you know, it. it Money is, uh, you know, it, it doesn't have morals. Um, but the problem is, is that, you know, it's the people, um, you know, some people, when they have a lot of money, they can do really good things with it. And some people, when they, when they, uh, when they have a lot of money, they can do really bad things. But, you know, money is really no different than a brick. And, you know, you know, it's just, you know, it's just the person holding the brick. You know, you can throw that brick through a window or you can actually make it or use it to make a, a, a house or a building. Um, but, you know, money doesn't have any, money is amoral. And when he said that, you know, it made me think about food and food really is amoral too. There's no, you know, and that's the problem with, uh, with our mindset is we think that there are good foods and there are bad foods. Yes, there are definitely foods that are better for us, but, you know, there's really no such thing as a bad food. And I have this, an example of this uh, fried uh, uh, cheesecake. Uh, one of the things um, my wife loves to do is she loves to go. She loves to eat cheeseburgers. So every once in a while, we don't do it all the time. We used to do it uh, quite a bit, but every once in a while, we'll go to a different restaurant and we'll get a. a I'll get a hamburger. She'll get a cheeseburger. Um, but you know, you probably heard of the Shack. You know, it's local. They actually opened up a new location here off Telgi. But I went in there uh, probably, what was it, about a month ago, and I believe it was a fried cheesecake. They had a fried cheesecake. Um, and it was really interesting because I've never really heard of fried cheesecake. It was either fried cheesecake or, you know, a fried Oreo. Uh, Oreo oh, it was fried pe a pecan pie that's what it was but anyway it made me think about it you know and i ever since i heard that i've been i've been tempted to go in there and get this uh, fried uh, pecan pie but the reason i bring that up is you know if you tell yourself that you're not going to eat something or you're going to diet if you're you know if you're going to refrain from having certain foods chances are you're just going to sabotage your results you're just going to set yourself up to fail so i pose this question to you what are some what are some of your favorite foods what are some of the foods that you really don't want to give up anyone i'm going to say cheese cheese okay that's great mm -hmm. thank you dainty what else Looks like we have about 15 or 16 people on the call. What? So what are some of the foods that you really just don't want to go without? Maybe they're not foods. Maybe uh, maybe they're actually maybe they're beverages. Maybe it's alcohol. You know. So what are the things that uh, you really don't want to give up? Anyone else? Okay, we're trying to make this interactive. I know we have quite a few people on. Anyone else? Soda. Soda? Okay. Soda. What kind of soda? Any kind of soda. Any kind? I'm sure you have Dr. a... Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. That, oh, that's that's a great one. Okay, what else? Chocolate. Chocolate. Have you ever tried to get... Has anybody ever tried to give up chocolate? Has anybody ever tried yes, to give up it's one? Yes, impossible. Exactly. It is impossible because, impossible. you know, there's something psychological about it. You know, when we tell ourselves that we're going to give something up, we crave it even more. 
And so, you know, I want you to think about that for a second. You know, what are some of the foods that you just really enjoy and that you want to continue eating? You know, you may go through the detox and you may eliminate uh, eliminate those foods for maybe seven to 21 days. But, you know, those are foods that you can add back into your back into your diet. And that's, uh, you know, that brings us to our next point. But, you know, the goal, the ultimate goal is to is, is to strive for moderation in everything. It may be a cheeseburger for one person. It may be a glass of wine for another. It may be that uh, it may be cheese. You know, it may be the Dr. Pepper. You know, I never want to tell anybody, you know, in the beginning as a personal trainer, at least for the first couple of years, I told people they had to they had to give those things up. And when you do that, you know, last week we talked about the psychology of deprivation, but you can do great for a few weeks and then the cravings start to increase. And eventually you're going to have some type of a binging episode and then you're going to feel guilty and then you're just going to fall off plan completely. But if you can actually take the foods that you like and you can add those into your meal plan throughout the week and, you know, make sure that you're using those foods or uh, those uh, beverages in moderation, you know, there, there's no reason you can't do that. So moving on, I want to talk about the digestive system and we're going to get into the macronutrients here in just a second. But, you know, you the digestive system is a really sophisticated food processor. You know, you have two different processes. You have mechanical and chemical. So mechanical is everything from chewing to swallowing to the muscular activity in, in the walls of the, di the uh, digestive tract. And then the chemical uh, phase is, you know, all the uh, enzymes uh, that act as catalysts. And, of course, the, it starts with the saliva and then the gastric acid in your st stomach. And then, uh, you know, a majority of micronutrients are actually absorbed in your intestinal tract. But one thing to, one thing to note is that, you know, sugar starts to, starts to get uh, broken down in your mouth. So when you start eating something, it doesn't matter if it's Reese's Pieces, which used to be one of my favorite uh, pieces of candy or a banana, you know, it's going to get broken down into sugar and it starts in your mouth. And now, once um, uh, a majority, well, fat is actually broken down in the stomach or uh, it's actually broken down in the, in the liver and then protein is also broken down in the stomach and then a majority of those micronutrients are then abs uh, absorbed or broken down uh, or the the acids are broken down into micronutrients in in your intestinal tract and that's important to understand because when we think of the macronutrients we want to think about them in this order we want to think about them in order of protein first fat second and carbohydrates third if you've ever eaten one of those prepackaged healthy meals like uh, um, what is it, My, My Fit Foods or, you know, some of the other popular ones out there. But if you look at those prepackaged meals, what's always on top? It's the, it's the protein. They want you to eat the protein first because what that does is that actually slows down the rate of absorption. Um, it slows down. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause your body to uh, work a lot harder uh, to break down, um, to break down all, all of those foods. But Protein first, then fat, and then carbohydrates. Now, when you're eating a lean protein, chances are you're going to be eating some fat with it. And then ideally, you would be having a complex carbohydrate. That would be an example of a high-quality meal, which we're going to get into that in just a second. But I want you to think of your metabolic rate like it's a fire. That you, the goal is to keep that fire burning all day long. I remember when I was in Boy Scouts and we used to go camping, one of the ways that we would keep a fire burning at night is we would throw some coal on the fire. And, you know, coal is like fat. You know, it's a, it, it's a great source of fuel and it's going to burn over a longer period of time. But if you want to get that fire go, uh, going in the morning, what we would do is we'd throw some gasoline on it and then we'd throw a couple of logs. Well, the gasoline is like adding carbohydrates. Um, you know, obviously if you're, you know, there's a difference between carbohydrates, but in the end, they all get broken down into sugar and it's like throwing gasoline on a fire. The key is to make sure that you're adding at least a couple of logs every three to four hours. So if you're adding a couple of logs, then you're adding a couple pieces of coal, and then you're taking some gasoline and putting it on the fire, that's gonna, that fire is going to burn consistently all day long. And that's really the ultimate, uh, that's really the ultimate goal. So protein, 
is you know is like the log but it's a, a building material it's a good source of energy and it's going to account for anywhere between 20 upwards of 40 percent of of the of all the calories that you consume throughout the day one gram of uh, one gram of protein yields about four calories we'll talk a little bit more about calories later on uh, there's a lot of benefits but just remember you know it's a it, it, protein uh, is building material and a good source of energy now there are do, there are actually two different subcategories of protein you have complete and incomplete so complete means that it contains all of the essential amino acids and I want you to think of this mother concept so think of anything that came from or had a mother and uh, you know some examples would be like animal sources and dairy products you know we've got a list here like whey casein milk eggs beef cheese chicken fish yogurt cottage cheese turkey those would be examples of complete proteins because they came from or they had a mother now incomplete sources mean that they don't contain all of the uh, adequate amounts of of the essential amino acids uh, but there are some that can complement it complement one another for example like rice and beans and they can they can form a complete protein but some examples of incomplete proteins would be uh, legumes like uh, beans lentils and nuts you know you've got vegetables fruits rice grains oats pasta nuts uh, bread and sunflower seeds those are all examples of incomplete proteins now here are some examples of lean complete proteins you have egg whites skim milk white fish, salmon, tuna, shrimp, lobster, chicken breast, pork, turkey breast, beef tenderloins, buffalo, elk, and bison. So, and here are the top 10 proteins that I would recommend. The reason we're putting these proteins in this order is one of the things to consider is what's called the biological value of protein. And that's just, what that means is whether or not it has all of the essential, semi-essential, non-essential amino acids. And it was really interesting because back in, I believe it was in the late 70s, um, milk used to have, so when, um, you know, they put milk that, well, whey is actually a, a derived from milk, but they put milk into these big buckets and this film, uh, this filmy layer uh, of basically like fat would be on the top of it. And when they when they started understanding this a little bit better and they they really looked at um, they really started looking at the, the nutrient value of it. They, they determined that it actually had the highest biological value um, out of any protein out there. Um, they, it goes through a filtration process, but um, whey is derived from milk, and it's one of the purest forms of protein. Uh, the second on the list is going to be turkey and chicken. Then we have fish. Uh, you know, preferably when you're looking at fish, you want to look at your look at a white fish, but you have tuna, salmon, uh, tilapia, halibut, uh, you have pork loins or chops, uh, lean beef or veal, eggs, tofu, cheese, uh, low mozzarella or cottage cheese, you have yogurt and milk, and then you have your beans, your lentils, legumes, and nuts. So what are your top, what are your top five favorite proteins? Anyone? Remember, this is supposed to be interactive. So, what are your favorite? What are your favorite five proteins? I would say lean beef and chicken breast, um, salmon, um, and yogurt. I eat a lot of yogurt. All right, yogurt. That's four. I didn't give another one, but that's it. What would happen if you just, uh, Nina? What would happen if you just ate chicken all day long? You would get really tired of it. <laughs> exactly. And that's really the point. That's why I'm asking you to think of five. Right. Because that way you have to make sure that you're eating a variety of proteins. If you're mm -hmm. just eating the same protein day in and day out, chances are you're going to get sick of it pretty quickly. Yeah. So what would be another one? The pork chops, for sure. The pork bit. chops. Yes, pork chops. Who else? Dainty, how about you? I kind of eat a lot of nuts, but beef is my preference, so I haven't been eating it a lot, but the lean okay. beef. And uh, you were there at the cooking class, weren't you? Yes. 
So, you know, we talked about this a little bit, but is beef really a bad choice? No, not at all. No. I don't think. Well, remember, <laughs> you know, there is no such thing as a bad choice. But, you know, I sh share this example, but the beef was actually leaner than the boneless, skinless chicken breast. And in, in, yeah. in the example that I shared, so you can find some really lean sources of beef and, you know, actually grass fed beef, for example, it has more omega threes than a lot of uh, um, than a lot of the other meats. And so, you know, there's not there's nothing wrong with beef, but it's back to the principle of everything in moderation. You know, you can't eat beef every day, you know, every meal all day long. So what are some what are some other proteins that. Uh, that you like to eat? You said beef. What are four more? Uh, bison. We just bought some bison. We're going to do some stuff with that. All right, bison. Green bison. Mm -hmm. What else? Like I said, I, I, have, I eat a lot of nuts. I keep them in my car with me at all times. So. Okay, nuts. Go to snack. Give me at uh, least two more that came from or had a mother. Okay, eggs and turkey. Eggs and turkey. There you go. Perfect. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions about protein? Remember, if you don't feel comfortable, you can always uh, type in your questions in the chat box. Uh, but we're going to move on then to fat. So, you know, coal is like uh, is like fat. It's uh, your body's reserve source of energy. Now, this is going to account for anywhere between 10 and 40 percent of the total calories you have throughout the day. One gram yields nine calories, so it's over twice as many as protein and fat. And, you know, there are many benefits. We're not going to get into all the benefits, um, but fat is extremely important. And one of the things that, you know, the food industry has done is they, you know, they, especially back in the 80s, they, you know, they said that fat was bad for you. And that's not true at all. And as a result, we came out with all of these fat-free or reduced fatty uh, fat foods uh, that had, you know, two to three times as much sugar, and uh, you know, they, they were they had two to three times as many carbohydrates, and that's one of the reasons that we're having this obesity epidemic in this country. is has nothing to do with fat, um, but it just has to do with the amount of carbohydrates, and in particular, the amount of sugar that we're taking in. Um, but fat is important. Like I said, it'll account for anywhere between 10 and 40 percent of your diet. Now, fat is also broken down into two subcategories. You have saturated, which are solid at room temperature generally, and then you have unsaturated, which are uh, liquid at room temp temperature. And, um, you know, saturated fats are uh, are generally derived from uh, from animal sources. There are a couple of exceptions like coconut or palm oil. And then uh, unsaturated fats are primarily um, primarily come from uh, vegetable sources. And, you know, one of the biggest misconceptions is that, you know, a lot of people think, and you're hearing this now, it's, it's really interesting because you started hearing this about five years ago and now it's, uh, now it's recycling again. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, with with butter per se. Uh, right here on this list I have it at number nine, but it depends on what you're using the fats for. So the reason that I came up with this list is most of the time people are using fats to cook with. And so that's why I'm using this top 10 list. The problem is is that when you cook with certain oils, uh, they can they can start to break down and they can actually become toxic. Uh, they can become saturated fats. Uh, so you you really do, or they can even become trans fats, which uh, you know you should obviously avoid those, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But here are the top ten uh, fats that we'd recommend. So and these are primarily for cooking. So ghee, uh, coconut oil, um, safflower oil, and grapeseed oil. Those are going to be as far as the liquids. Uh, those are going to be the top two that we'd recommend, especially if you're cooking somewhere between you know 180 upwards and maybe 200 and uh, you know, 220-ish degrees. Then you have sunflower, yeah. olive, corn, canola, soybean, peanut, butter, and then traditional margarine. Or margarine, excuse me. Um, but those would be the uh, those would be the top 10 fats. So I pose that question again: What are your What are some of your favorite fats? And there may be plenty of them that are not on this list, like nut butter or avocados. You know, even nuts have a lot of fat. Um, but what are some of your favorite fats?
Anyone? Anyone? I'll talk Avocados. again like I normally Avocados? do. Um, regular peanut butter. Peanut butter, okay. Mm -hmm. Almond butter. Almond butter. Good. What else? I use grapeseed oil to bake uh, uh, sweet potatoes. Okay. Very good. What else? Come on, give me one more. Anyone? Anyone? I use a lot of avocados. Avocados? Uh, yes. Okay, very good. You know, and, and I would say I would say olive oil. Olive oil? Okay, great. You know, I it's for, not for even, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, so for dressings, like for salad dressings or vinaigrette okay. or something. Very good, excellent. You know, uh, we don't have the avocado oil on this list, but that would also be one that would be within the top three. So that's great, especially uh, when, it, especially for cooking with. So one of the things to consider when it comes to fats is there are there are some things that you want to avoid. Uh, you want to make sure that you buy an oil. If you're going to spend any money at the grocery store. You want to make sure that you get a good quality oil to cook with, and so look for something that's not processed or refined. Um, you know, but some of the refined oils can be really good. But you want to look at the uh, the what they call the heating point, and if it's over, I'd say about 220 degrees, you're probably in pretty good shape. But you know, obviously, you want to use them sparingly. Um, you know, if you're male, you're going to basically use your thumb. And if you're a female, you're going to use the tip of your thumb. Uh, but use the vegetable or the fruit oils, and uh, you know the you can use the the soft margins in place of the hard uh, margarines or, or or shortenings. Uh, but stay away from the the hydrogenated oils or sugar found in the fat substitutes. And it, if you're going to use a margarine or a spread, uh, make sure it it contains zero grams of trans fats. And the but one of the problems is that if it says if it actually contains less than uh, 0.5 grams per serving, they can actually claim the manufacturer can claim that it has zero grams of trans fats. So you want to be careful. Look at the ingredients and make sure that there are, are no added ingredients. Uh, but the butter sprays don't necessarily contain zero calories. You know, they're I'm not. You know, we said there's no such thing as a bad food. Uh, if you're going to use a butter spray, that's a good start. Uh, but there are better choices that you can make later on. Uh, does anybody have any questions when it comes to fats? Any questions? Okay, we're going to move on to carbohydrates then. So carbohydrates are like the gasoline, throwing gasoline on the fire. When you throw gasoline on a fire, it ignites and then it dissipates pretty quickly. Um, now, our bodies don't quite work like that, but you know what our body's going to do is it's going to use what it needs to as energy, as fuel, and then it's going to store the rest as, as a adipose tissue or fat mass. So you want to be careful, especially... Uh, especially when it comes to your carbohydrate uh, intake and that's why a lot of these diets are popular like the South Beach or the Atkins the, uh, the Atkins or the paleo diets and a lot of and the reason why is because you're you're significantly cutting your carbohydrate intake which actually makes up the biggest percentage of your total diet and it's going to account for anywhere between 40 upwards of 75 percent and this is going to vary from person to person you know a lot of it goes back to your body type um, you know, if you're an, an ectomorphic, uh, if you have an ectomorphic body type, if you're naturally thin, you're probably going to require more carbohydrates. Um, if you're an endurance athlete, you're probably going to be eating upwards of 75% carbohydrates. So it's going to be different for everybody. You know, generally when people are trying to lose weight, we'll try to, we'll try to make sure they're taking in about 40 to 50% carbs anywhere between 30 and 40 percent protein and anywhere between uh, 15 and, and 30 percent fat uh, but one gram yields four calories and there are a number of benefits we're not going to get into all of them um, but you know uh, carbohydrates are also broken down into two subcategories you have simple and complex and I like to think of uh, that game Red Rover Red Rover 
let Jimmy come over. But you know, back when you were in elementary school and you played that game where you were holding hands and somebody would have to run across and try to break through your hands, you know, that's a lot like. Uh, like I love a, that game. Yeah, it is. It's a good game. Uh, I miss it. We should we should play it at the gym. <laughs> That make sure yeah. everybody signs a waiver first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, you know that's a that's a a great way to understand uh, uh, understand uh, uh, sugars uh, because the more complex the sugar units, um, the more complex the carbohydrate is. So you have like your mono and your uh, your your disaccharides, and then you have your 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 polysaccharides, but your your simple carbohydrates are usually going to be the one to two sugar units, and they're easily uh, digested, and you know they're they immediately turn into glycogen or, or glucose, which is your blood sugar, or glycogen. And once uh, you know once your reserve is filled up, then uh, you know de depending on where you're at, it can be uh, converted into uh, into fat. But you want to make sure to try to stay away from anything that is bleached. Uh, enriched or even refined or processed and some examples of simple carbohydrates are going to be like maple honey candies and cakes now your complex carbohydrates uh, there's really nothing nothing magical about them but they take a little bit longer to, to uh, digest and they can sustain your energy levels over a longer period of time so exam some examples would be like fruits and vegetables uh, starches and fiber now a lot of nutritionists they'll say that fruits are not really uh, not really a, a a complex carbohydrate, um, but a lot of fruit contains an outer skin, which is called cellulose or semicellulose, and it contains fiber. And fiber can actually slow down the rate of absorption. So for our uh, our purposes tonight, you know, we're going to consider fruits to be a complex carbohydrate. Um, there's nothing wrong with either one, um, but when it comes to simple carbohydrates, you want to make sure that you're consuming those in moderation. But, you know, a lot of people can gain weight by over consuming even uh, even, you know, good quality uh, complex carbohydrates. So some examples of, you know, your vegetables, I mean, pretty much every vegetable you can think of. The one that is not on the list, uh, which, you know, it should be is, you know, and you, you've been hearing a lot of people talk about how you should stay away from corn. Well, it's back to what we were talking about at the beginning, but there's nothing necessarily wrong with corn. Uh, but it's the corn sugar uh, that's being added to everything that, you know, that's debatable. Uh, but, you know, your com so, so vegetables would be considered complex carbohydrates, and you also have your starches, like the, the barley, the beans, the, the black-eyed peas, um, you know, the corn tortillas, the cream of rice, or the cream of wheat, the grits, uh, the lentils, the legumes. Um, you know, your oatmeal, your pastas, uh, your quinoa, your sweet potato, your yams, and so on and so forth. Now, here are the top 10 carbohydrates. And to, to put it simplistically, if you're going out to eat and you're worried about um, making a good choice, you can have your lean protein, which could be your chicken breast, and you could have your vegetable, which could be your broccoli or your asparagus, and that could be a well-balanced meal. You know, when Mark was in town a few weeks ago, uh, we went to a, a restaurant. Where was it? Out in Sealy somewhere. And, um, you know, Mark ordered a chicken breast and he ordered some asparagus. And, you know, that was, uh, you know, that was his high quality meal for lunch. And you can uh, you can do that. You know, I, I've said this all the time, but when you're going out to eat, it can be as simple as that. So that's why we have uh, vegetables and fruits at the top of the list. You know, anytime you're getting a, a a sweet craving, have a piece of fruit, uh, but make sure that you're also, you know, balancing that with, uh, with a with a lean protein or, or with a complete protein. You know, one of the mistakes that people make is they'll have a banana and they think they're making a good choice, but they're not having any protein or any fat with that. And remember, you want to think about them in that order: that order, your protein, your fat, and then your carbohydrate. So the third. A third one on the list is going to be brown rice. Then we have quinoa, sweet potato, and yam. You've got your lentils and uh, your beans and your lentils, uh, oatmeal, uh, your bar barley, and your uh, bulgur. And then you have 100% whole wheat pasta and then 100% wheat, rye, or, or your multigrain breads. So that is the the top 10 carbohydrates. So 
So uh, what are your top what are your top five favorite carbohydrates? Anyone? We still have several people on the call. What are your what are your favorite carbohydrates? Remember, there's no such thing as a bad food. Anyone? Vegetables, fruits. What kind of I, vegetables? What kind of fruits? Well, just um, I'll do I'll roast broccoli and peppers and onions and mushrooms and asparagus and all that stuff, and I'll do a great big pan full in the oven or on the grill, one or the other, and it lasts for three or four days. Very just a bunch good. of vegetables with some olive oil and salt and pepper. And then the quinoa, I'll do a big batch on on the weekend, and I'll use it for my breakfast with yogurt, or I'll put it in with my salads, or the, that's my starch with my chicken breast and my vegetables that I made for dinner. Very I love good. the quinoa. Very good. Anyone else? So what are your favorite carbohydrates? And it doesn't necessarily have to be on this list. Anyone? That's oatmeal. Oatmeal? Yes, oatmeal is one of my favorite. That's great. So how would you how would you balance how would you balance your macronutrients for breakfast? You're gonna have oatmeal, so there's your your complex carbohydrate. What would you do? That's another thing for you, that? you told me about a long time ago. I put um, a scoop of protein powder in okay. there. Um, cinnamon. Some cinnamon. Um, black seed. And Very a good. scoop of real peanut butter. Awesome. And there you go. How how long does that take to make? Not two minutes probably. It's two minutes. Days. So there is a quick and convenient. A breakfast choice, and it takes less than two minutes to make. Very good, Dainty. Now what with you, go ahead. Oh. What I do is I you make one serving of the oatmeal that way. I cut it in half, and then I cook egg whites with it. Okay, you cook the egg whites in with the oatmeal. No, se separate. Okay, I separate. used to just to get down my egg whites. I used to put it in my oatmeal. <laughs> And I still do that. I still do that on, you know, on some occasions. Um, but that's not, you know, that's not a, a bad idea. But you'll do your so your oatmeal and then your egg whites. Yes. Okay. What about your fat? That's the I put the um, the almond butter in the oatmeal. The almond butter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, this this is starting to become a, a Sunday morning tradition for us, but uh, you know we'll have some nitrate free uh, free bacon. You know we'll have one to two slices. We'll do some egg whites, and usually it's a piece of Ezekiel bread or some oatmeal, and that's usually our breakfast. Or we do the you know the multi grain uh, pancakes. But that's a you know that's a a, a good high quality breakfast. What else? What about for lunch? What are some high quality options for lunch? That's always a that's always a difficult one because a lot of people are, you know, they're working or they're on the go and usually they're eating out. So what do you do for lunch? I usually cook extra uh boneless skinless chicken breast and then I just have extra vegetables from the night before and that'll be my lunch okay so you're just doing a chicken breast and some vegetables correct so what would happen if you did that five days in a row I would get very sick of chicken <laughs> I <laughs> exactly. I usually cook enough um, from dinner from the night before, and that's usually our leftovers for lunch the next day. Okay. That's not bad. So what else, So, what are some other high-quality options for, for lunch? You know, I, I know personally, um, at least 
one to two times a week, I'm I'm going out for lunch. And, you know, I'm here in the Cypress area, so I'm either going to Nukes or I'm going to Saladas, and I'm getting a salad. Uh, you know, I like that Nukes favorite. It, uh, that, that's actually one of my favorite salads. I'll get that without with the without the gorgonzola cheese or the artichokes just because I don't like artichokes and I get the dressing on the side and I'll just take my fork and I just dip it into the uh, salad dressing and then I eat the salad um, eat the salad like that and that you know that's a that's a good high quality option for for lunch you know it's a lot of if you haven't been over there that's a, that's one of my favorite restaurants but they uh, they have some really good uh, really good salads over there what are some other options for lunch? I do tuna sometimes. It's easy to, to tote around. Tuna and brown rice. Okay. Some tuna, some brown rice. And what do you use for your fat? It really depends. Um, sometimes I don't. Um, okay. That's, that's just that's easy to, to carry around, but um, I don't know. Depends. Okay. So, and, I mean, there would, wouldn't really be uh, any problem with just taking a little bit of mayonnaise, you know, a, a little thumb size size of mayonnaise, and mixing that in, and having that with some, uh, you know, pita chips or, you know, with your brown rice. Yeah. What are some uh, What are some options for? Uh, for your AM and PM snacks, as far as that quick and convenient or go-to meals. What does everybody do for, for example, like for their AM snack in between uh, breakfast and lunch? I'll do a shake with fruit and spinach all in it. A shake with fruit and spinach, very good. You know, and that it can be that simple. The shakes, the protein bars, those are always really quick and convenient meals you can have in between um, breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner. Very good. So the last thing I want to go over is just the uh, uh, the the homework assignment. So what I want you to do is I want you to identify the foods that you really can't live without. And you should never feel like you're depriving yourself of, of your favorite foods. So really think about that. You know, what are the foods that you really enjoy to eat, that you really enjoy eating? And make sure that you add those into your meal plan. You know, maybe you don't do that during the detox. Uh, but now that most of you are in the Ignite or the Thrive phases, you know, you can still eat. Uh, you can still eat some of those foods. It's just about making sure you're doing it in moderation. And then identify the five uh, go to protein sources, uh, fat sources, and carbohydrate sources that you can uh, um, that you can use for for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or for your quick and convenient or go to snacks. So, does anybody have any questions, comments, questions or comments? Anyone? All right. Well, I hope you found this uh, this uh, webinar to be or this go-to meeting uh, to be beneficial. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy evening.